uh, this is me. And the most importantly, I'm a very, very proud member of you and your brother. Please put me always in your heart and nothing more uh, proud entity I, I believe I have rather than being a proud member of the institution. And you know, every institution has a legacy. Like today, I would like to recall the president of the, like founder president of the ICMAB, Rul Kuddusar, for which we got such an amazing, worthy and impactful institute like ICMAB. Yes, the legacy carries by generation to generation, people by people. And there are a lot of contribution and the, the figures also shows that the first curriculum as per the education department record, I could be, this is the source of information in the education department. First revision was 1984 curriculum revision. And this is a very common phenomenon that over the period of a certain uh, period, it, it uh, go for improvement. And it has been happened also our institute, nothing exceptional happened. But one interesting thing was happened in 2010, uh, 2015. That is, ICMAB authority has taken the decision for adopting the 2010 CIMA syllabus because CIMA has a policy to review every five years. So when CIMA was taking their 2015 curriculum, ICMAB adopted 2010, even removing few elements as well. Today we'll show that a, a, a curriculum is always is a bundle. So however, then we had a concern that we have the concern about two issues. One issue was that curriculum reflects the professional capability and identity of an institution. If we all adopt the one curriculum, there is no need the any institute, one single institution is enough for the whole world. So professional capability means this profession is able to develop its own curriculum, which is the value addition process. And it also reflects that this is a unique professional institution. So it was our concern. And also we have the concern that as curriculum is a continuous process. So if I adopt others curriculum, I will lose the control to improvement as well. Means for my improvement, I have to also depend others. So this was the two issue we raised for the attention of the leadership. And I'm grateful to members that members have accepted this issue, though it takes five years, and members gave the mandate to this leadership, current leadership, for establishing those very two important issues, establishing the professional entity and capability of the ICMB to demonstrate its professional capability for build the curriculum, as well as through this curriculum, our own institutional control over our curriculum will be established. So I'm grateful to Almighty that we have reached at this level. So with this backdrop, I want to proceed in that way. As we all know, ICMAB is a statutory institution and it has a very professional process as well. And how it goes? Students, from now and so on, we will use the terminology that is aspiring professional institution as per the guideline of IFA. So what happens in here, we all know, students enrolled in ICMAB, then they qualified, then continuous professional development arranged, and ICMAB also take responsibility for the CPD for the members, unlike other educational institution, because education institution just give the terminal degree. But here, the CPD programs continuously arrange for the continuous development of the members. Then, through this process, we expect that the high performing CMA will be established. So it is acclaimed in everywhere that the high performing CMA or professional account not only depends on the terminal degree, but also the CPD is a very important thing. If so, then what should be the education system of the institution? Education system should comprise the ICMAB, 
terminal education process as well as the CPD. So CPD also should have a formal curricula and its assessment system as well, as per the Alpha guideline. I think Alpha is very much generous to us that uh, they, they are not seriously isn't taking care of these issues. But however, now let's see how we can visualize the overall education system. Curriculum is one of the elements of the overall education system. Then learning material is another element. Who teaches is a very, very important element in the center of the whole education system and in which process they are teaching. And how the questions is said, examination system is in the place as well as evaluation system. Now, how do we evaluate our students or aspiring professional accountants? And education leadership and infrastructure, another very important instrument that who will administrate what is the structure as well as the person who will administrate the whole education system. And as you can remember that in our uh, National Council election system, there was a mapping that how will be the education system as well. And quality assurance, there must have a cell which will assure the quality, overall quality of both uh, terminal education as well as that is IPD, which says the initial professional development and the CPD. So these all of the elements, why I'm showing it so that we do not mislead or we do not be confused about that today we are talking about curriculum means we are talking about all curriculum for IPD and CPD. No, we are only talking about one element of the curriculum, but whole education system is a very big thing. If we want to encash the ultimate benefit of a professional accountant of ICMAB, we have to address all these issues in an integrated way. And I believe that the capable leadership having the top priority of the ICMAB interest definitely will do it. But what is my understanding that it takes minimum three to five years, even we work with this continuous momentum. That's a very big thing. But what we want to do, we want to place in front of the respected learned members that we want to showcase the whole picture that how we are proceeding on. And definitely what culture we will establish in the across the institution and what governance will establish it. So uh, this leadership believe in this as a whole picture. And if we look at here, that curriculum and one element, one fragment, fragment of the curriculum we are talking about. So this is a whole picture and we are dealing with one sub-slice of the whole education system of the ICMP. And how we go for design and development of the ICMP curriculum 2021. The key feature, after developing this sort of feature, we try to add in here. Alpha framework, we try to comply 100% Alpha framework for developing our curriculum. Yes, we may have still, we may have some areas for improvement, but we do not compromise a single issue, avoid a single issue from the Alpha framework. So I believe that whole team should get a clap from you. And it follow international accounting, education standard board guideline and the standards. We comply. And this curriculum, just not putting a content, a set of content, rather an analytical framework, integrated and connected analytical framework has been built. And the content has been put in the analytical framework for building an integrated, a relationship among all the elements of the curriculum. And this is an outcome-based education. As you know, Bangladesh government and UGC has also taken the outcome-based education initiatives across its now other professional, other educational and professional institutions. And we are very happy that in our curriculum, we also embedded the outcome-based outcome, uh, outcome -based, uh, curriculum and for which I really indebted all of the team leaders and the team members for making it happen. And 
the most important group for which we are talking about is scalable and flexible for continuously improvement. So another criteria is it's scalable and flexible. Means from now and so on, you know, business world is rapidly changing. Even what we do today, some people or some of you may come up with that as Malva has also mentioned. A lot of suggestions are coming. So without without like abandon this framework, we can adjust in this framework. So this is one of the very unique features of our curriculum. In in coming days, we don't need to like leave this curriculum. Rather, we can adapt to this curriculum. We can adapt the changes and we can make it updated. So this is another uh, unique features of this curriculum. So in th these are the important aspects of the curriculum and these are the process we follow. We first define the professional CMA, means who will be the CMA, what kind of attributes we want to see. Then we develop the objective of the program by which the, that CMA will be produced. Then we design the professional uh, program and its component. Then we design uh, knowledge pillar, then we design developed learning outcomes, means with this knowledge pillar, what we want to achieve. And then we, we integrate the knowledge pillar and define the knowledge pillar accordingly. And develop the learning outcomes of every courses, means we do not put courses first. We use course for achieving the knowledge targets for, for the targeted CMS. And then we develop learning outcomes of the topic of each courses. So you can easily see that this is very systematically connected. All the steps has been followed. And this was the workflow. First, it has been conceptualized. Then we finalized the analytical framework with the leadership of ICMAB and education department. Then the team building and the workshop. When we come up with that from the analytical framework, there will be seven pillars. So we need seven teams. Accordingly, the workflow has been designed. It's not like that. Uh, we, need, we will engage seven people arbitrarily. So need-based engagement of the professionals has been happening also in here. Then we go for the content development and the mapping and the inter-team peer review. As you can see that there was around 500 professional man hour in one day has been happened in the hotel six season. Every, uh, some of you may be confused that the on that day curriculum has been developed. No, this is one of the element on that day we were arranged an inter-team peer review. Means one team evaluate the other team's uh, content and give the insights. So that was as uh, due to the social media, it was in the public, but other things has been happened fast. It has been developed. Then we went the six seasons and you will be amazed to know that there in a single day, there was a 500 man professional hour have been engaged to for only interpowers. And as a whole, I was, I was guessing how many hours have been engaged just to develop this curriculum for last uh, couple of months, like six months, more than 5,000 hours, professional man hours have been already engaged. And still we believe that all the team members will engage for another one year for continuously its development. So in that way, today we, we, we are in a session and that session is that interaction with members. Today, we, this is one of the formalities as well. After that, we will go for further adjustment of your uh, like inputs. And then these teams and the seven pillars continuously monitor it and continuously they will try to improve it. And this is the uh, formal process, workflow process we would like to uh, implement it. And here, then we first come up with that. We want to produce, ICMAB would like to produce the professional accountant. Then what does the professional accountant mean by the alpha? So alpha says that a professional accountant must have the professional competence with, they have to achieve it, they have to demonstrate it. Means I have a certificate, I have to demonstrate with my work and I have to continuously develop it. And I have to perform as a professional complying a set of code of ethics, which is called the professional code of ethics. So this was our underpinning definition, which lead us to build our analytical framework and curriculum. So then we come up with this visualization. 
Professional competence are very important for a professional accountant to perform professional performance. Then the objective of the CMA program should build those professional competence nicely. Then we can say CMAs are the best performers. So this is the like uh, framework we come up with that definition. And I thought defines that professional competence depends on professional values, ethics and attitude, technical competency and professional skills. They nicely define it and they put it in that way. They list down, these are the technical competency, these are the professional skills and these are the professional values, ethics and attitude. And one of the limitation of our curriculum development was that we couldn't conduct the primary research. That is one of the one of the element of international curriculum development due to COVID and other constraints. But we try to use the input of primary research because where there is a problem, there is a way for solution. So one of the very important research in this respect has been developed by Dr. Lawson in 2018. He come up with a framework that how the management accounting is changing and what are the process by which the professional management cost and management accounting should adopt. So they, he says that his research, in fact, demonstrate that earlier it was an oversight. That's a, it limits with the data collection and preparing healthy financial profile. Then over the period it changes, it's in the hindsight, which shows that using historical data for future projection. Then it is turning to information to intelligence, which is called insights building. But now, due to the demand of the quick changes and digital disruption, the need of the professional accountant, particularly cost and management accounting is the foresighting, means they have to predict future, they have to adapt with the future. So this has given a very strong footprint for defining the cost and man future cost and management accounting. And based on, not only that, I have also used in this case, the McKinsey's research of the, for the skill mapping for the next next decade, the, based on their research, they come up with that. So based on that, we come up with a definition of what kind of CMA we want to get. We want to get a CMA who will lead, who will be the leader. Leader means when they join, they do not hold a very high position. Maybe he, he join in a functional leader, like as a cost and management accounting department or the finance department. But we consider that we want to put the point that every CMA will be will hold the leadership attributes and they will be the strategist. Whatever their position, organizational position, they will work as a strategist. Is they will be the strategic partner of the company and they will be the adaptable. As you know, even from the COVID-19, one of the key challenges from any organization in the coming world due to digital disruption as well as changing world, adaptability is a very important criteria, very quick adaptability. So we want to see our CMA having the adaptability capability as well, which is also indicated by the Lawson's research as well. So from, from that uh, definition of the CMA, we thought that this file elements can make it happen. That integrated mindset of the, and the leadership skill will be built, business document, and accounting and financial document, technological adaptability, professional value ethics, and attitude. So combining the research and the IFAC framework, we come up with these attributes we want to build for our future generation CMA through this curriculum. And then that definition leads us the objective of the CMA professional program. So these are the seven CMA professional programs objectives, which we want to achieve that through these seven objectives of the CMA program. So I'm not going in detail because you have the literature as well. Then level of professional education how it is processed. As I have mentioned you earlier, aspiring professional accountants enter into the process, 
then initial professional development as per alpha guideline this says that the education we are talking about ipd which when they complete the ipd they become the qualified cm then after completing this they become member and when they go through the cpd then they become the high performing professional accountant so these are the layers we want to integrate sorry so then ipd like the initial professional development for which we are talking about which requires the professional accounting education practical experience and the examination system combining these three we can fulfill the ipd requirement then let's see how it happens professional education then practical experience through article sheet and as per the examination system combining these three of the three levels will be used to develop the technical competency professional skills and professional value ethics and attitude we said and with that we will get a qualified cma so having this framework now how we will go for focusing in the professional accounting education and interestingly in this pro project we have only focus on the curriculum development of professional accounting education still we do not go for practical experience or examination so here the technical competency component have been clustered in the seven pillars so when we come up with the seven pillars then we come up with seven highly qualified professionals and i believe that except these seven there are 10 minutes out yeah uh, maximum 5 to 10 minutes please okay five minutes are finished so when we come up with this uh, seven pillars then we get that like except this out of 1500 members these seven are excellent but may not be the best means all are capable to hold the position but as you know due to the process they need to be engaged but definitely i'm grateful for all of them for playing their excellent role and this was the composition as our chairman of the education committee has already mentioned and here the professional initial professional education uh, development is happen is like that there is in seven pillars is in here and then the case study case study come in the place and as a result from based on that framework we come up with this uh, overall framework for setting it so this is our holistic framework and you can see here that professional accounting education which is a part of the ipd and knowledge pillar covers it and another element is the practical experiences and i want to mention another thing that there are three competency one is technical competency which covers all these courses but another two is more cognitive so through this training and through this interaction and the classroom interaction overall environment will help us to build the professional attitude skills and in addition the communication course and other course will also help us to develop the other cognitive skill like the professional uh, uh, skills as well as the ethics and the attitude so this is the overall picture and these are the mapping as per the course code and we try to use the knowledge taxonomy that is the modified bloom's taxonomy which is including the decision making for setting the learning outcome and this is also another scientific model for building the outcome we try to use it and in this way we proceed we first come up with the objective of the cma professional program then the learning outcome of the knowledge pillar and then we compose the course then we set the learning outcomes of the topics and these are the seven lucky components in fact we didn't plan earlier for the seven when we come up with the seven throughout the process and in that case uh, billu bhai is in, uh, not here 
I, 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 I must, I must would like to give a very high thanks to, sorry, Biluvai Nozul, Mohammad Nozul, and definitely Jakaria Bhai create this miracle. Whenever I say that all the pains for setting up uh, Nozul Bhai and the Jakaria Bhai set it, and Alhamdulillah, we come up with all the seven multipliers. Means we have seven objectives for CMA program, seven objectives for the seven K pillars seven multiply 20 learning outcomes for all, every courses. Topics is also the multiplier of uh, seven, seven multiply 36, the total number of topics. And the learning outcome is also a uh, multiplier of seven, seven multiply 81. And these are the, this is the visualization of the overall analytical model. And this is one of the example, how we connected mapping this analytical framework. All of the, this is an example of a course. This is the seven program objectives. And then we map it that what are the, how the different pillars objectives, how this particular pillars objectives are connected with the program's objective. Then we map here that how the different courses of a pillar are connected with the pillar objective as well as the program objective and how the topics objectives are connected with the pillar. So this is the whole game set it very connected with. So if we want to change in future, we can do accordingly. And for that, we also developed a spreadsheet. I'll show you within a minute. And this is a snapshot of that CMA program, seven pillars, 21 course, 20, 252 topics and subtopics is 1688. But this is under the same umbrella, which will help us to Connect that why we said this. And limitations and the challenge need more time for fine tune analytical linkage, as well as there are some language improvement scope. Uh, I, I definitely would like to admit we have to get more time in the coming days. So I apologize. That is a big document. So uh, I, I think you will make it. And the curriculum is one of the element of the education system. So as I have shown you in the very beginning, this is one of the one of the element of the curriculum. This is even not the curriculum of the CPD. So is effectiveness fully depends on the other elements effectiveness as well. An optimum conversion policy for the existing student is really required. And as I have shown in here, that if we want to make it successful, we must need to take care of all of the things for his success. And the, the, I think National Council and the Education Department is working for a con a conversion policy. And definitely from our side, we may think that it may avoid any extra burden for the student for the conversion. And benefit of doubt should be always to the student, I believe. And the students must have the appeal option as well. So I request our respected chairman, very dynamic chairman of the education committee to consider those factors to encourage our students without compromising the professional requirement. And thank you very much. But before ending, I want to request uh, Mamun Bhai just a 10 seconds for showing that we do not leave a single opportunity to add value of the whole curriculum even you will see that all the mapping are connected with the spreadsheet as well. And what we want to do, we want to design an analytical formula with the technology so that in the coming generation to generation can use this analytical framework and can improve continuous basis the curriculum. So thank you for your passion hearing. And I'm very much grateful again, the National Council and the president and the chairman of the education committee and none other than all of you who continuously inspire me, inspire all of us, all leaders for doing something great. I expect that overcoming this pandemic and other things, we will win a great, we will achieve a great new year. And here, the last note I want to recall, that is all of the beloved members who passed away in the, in the last year, especially, I would not like to forget the contribution and inspiration of Sudan Sudha, he really missed today's session. Uh, and, and, and we must recall every time the Sudan Sudha and his contribution for this great journey. Thank you very much.